Hello and welcome. This is Mark from setmysite.com and this is the third video that I'm doing on the blog post tutorial. And in this video, we're going to dive into the SEO. So a lot of folks out there are trying to use their blog to get a little bit more presence for their website on search engines and a blog is a great way to do that. And we actually have an SEO tool installed on your website to help you really get the most out of your blog post. So this is going to kind of go over uh, the use of that tool. As you can see, I'm logged into my example blog post that I've created about gingivitis. And if I scroll down to the bottom of the post, you'll see a section titled Yoast SEO, or it may say SEO tool uh, for you, but uh, it's the same thing. And when you look at the SEO tool, uh, you'll notice that it's kind of divided into a couple of sections. The first section here is this snippet preview. The second section is your focus keyword. And the third section is your analysis. And you're gonna be using all three of these sections to help uh, improve your overall SEO score. And so your SEO score is basically, you have uh, either a red, an orange, or a green dot, which will show up here. Uh, next to enter your focus keyword. Uh, and you want to make sure that your post has a green dot. That means you have done a good job optimizing your post for your focus keyword. So we're going to go over how to achieve the green dot status. Um, the first thing that we need to do is we need to come up with a focus keyword. So our focus keyword is going to be the keyword phrase that we actually want to optimize our blog post around. Uh, so this is what you want someone to type into Google and then find you for. So in this case, I want my focus keyword to be treatments for gingivitis. Okay, so I've come up with my focus keyword. This is what I, what I want people to find my blog post for, treatments for gingivitis. And so now I've got an orange button, uh, which is better than a red one. So that means there are some things that I can do to improve my post. So before we um, take a look at the problems and improvements, I want to go over the good results. And so this is what the analysis comes in. The analysis basically looks at your focus keyword and it compares it to everything you have up here in your blog post. And then it makes a, a decision about how well your, your uh, post has been formatted for search based on that focus keyword that you want to show up for. So it's a pretty cool system. Uh, we're gonna look at the good results here and it says that the text contains 837 words. So it likes that, it likes the long text. Generally speaking, longer blog posts are going to be more effective for search. So don't be shy right away, uh, write as many words as you can. Uh, then the next thing it says is this page has zero no followed outbound links and two normal outbound links. So Basically what they're saying here is normally you wouldn't be adding a no follow link, so I wouldn't worry about that, but they're looking at the links that we have. And we actually created links in the previous tutorial to show you how to create links. And so if we scroll up, we could probably find those links here. They're probably somewhere in the text. I can't remember where we put them, but anyway, there are a couple of links kind of embedded within the, the blog post itself. So it, it's happy that we have links. Now, if you created your blog post and you haven't added links into your blog post, you'll probably see this notice under improvements. And it'll may say, hey, you need to add some links to your blog post because generally Google wants to see what you're referencing when you're creating your blog post. So it's good to link out to your reference sources. So that's what that is all about. Um, and then it says you never used this focus keyword before. Very good. So it's saying, don't use the focus keyword more than once. So I'm writing a blog post on treatments for gingivitis. My next blog post, if I do an other blog post about treatments for gingivitis and I use the same focus keyword, uh, it's going to say that's a no-no. Don't use the same focus keyword. Don't focus on the same focus keyword in multiple posts. Otherwise, you're going to be cannibalizing your uh, website when it comes to being able to show up for that search term. So you want to have one post to really focus in on, on that specific focus keyword and, and don't use it again. So it's saying that those are good. Then it says, I have a couple of improvements. So we're going to go over the improvements and we're going to look at those. You have not used the focus keyword in any subheading, such as an H2 in your copy. Okay, so let's look at the uh, 
the what that what that means. So an H2 is a header tag. And if you recall from our first or second video, we talked about this drop down here and it has various headings, right? So an H2 would be a heading two. An H3 would be a heading three. So if I click on this where it says types, it says there's a, it says a, uh, it's a heading two, excuse me. And so that's that's good, but it's saying our focus keyword isn't in there. And it may be good for us to put our focus keyword into that heading. Okay, so we could say when it comes to treatments, well, what was my focus keyword? I'm sorry, here, let me come on. Treatments for gingivitis. Gingivitis are a few types, right? Something like that. That gets it in there. I know it doesn't really make sense, but this is, I'm just doing this for a demonstration here. You may have to think a little bit more critically about how to fit it in. Um, so let's see what it says now that I've done that. Uh, let's see. I might have to actually uh, just publish this real quick or update it. So let's update the post to see if it gives me an updated score. Scroll down and the focus keywords appears in one out of nine subheadings in your copy. So now it says that's good. And so when it comes to the focus keyword being in your headings, don't be shy. I would say, you know, if you can fit it into one, two, or three subheadings, you know, if you have nine, for example, as I do in this example, um, that may be good. Uh, so, you know, fit it in where it fits naturally. Don't, don't force it like I did here. But, uh, you know, you definitely want to get your focus keyword into your subheadings. Now, I'm kind of going in a little bit of reverse order here because I kind of went to the improvements. I should have been focusing on the problems first because the problems are issues that, like, you have to immediately kind of address. So, so I'm going to go back to improvements. I'm sorry for kind of being scatterbrained here. Um, but I'm going to go look at the problems first. It says the focus keyword doesn't appear in the first paragraph of copy. Make sure that it is clear immediately. So I'll just copy my focus keyword and go up to my first paragraph of copy. And I can just put it in the very first thing here and kind of do like a little dash here. And just go treatments for gingivitis. Gingivitis means inflammation of the gums, et cetera, et cetera. So let's see if it still gives me that problem. So it says the focus keyword appears in the first paragraph of copy. Good. And that says the keyword density is only 0.2%, which is too low. The focus keyword was found just two times. So it's saying that you should probably have the focus keyword inside the text of the actual uh, copy a little bit more. So just for the sake of demonstration, I'm just going to paste it in like randomly here just to kind of improve it. But see, you can see you'd have to go through your blog post and start figuring out where you're gonna to wanna to put this focus keyword where it makes sense. You know, you don't wanna force it. You still wanna make this post readable for human beings. So uh, let's see, the keyword density is 0.8%, which is great. Focus keyword is probably seven times. All right, so we got that one down. No meta description has been specified. Search engines will display copy. Okay, so this is an important one. Your meta description is right here in this in the snippet preview. So this is the first part of the of the SEO Yoast. So this is like the fun part that everyone likes to do because you can actually modify how the uh, meta title and meta description appear on a search engine when somebody finds your website. So click on this, and that opens up the meta description and SEO title and slug editor. And so what we're going to do is focus on the meta description here. So it wants us to make our own unique description for this blog post. So number one rule, make sure your focus keyword is in the meta description. Number two rule, the closer you can get your focus keyword to the beginning of the meta description, the better. If you can keep it in the very front, even better. So I'm just gonna post, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm just gonna paste my focus keyword directly into my meta description. And then from here, you can come up with any description that you'd like. You want to make your description saleable so people are wanting to click to read more and you want to make it informative so you can you know position yourself as one of the better 
uh, results that are showing up on a search engine results page. So I'm not going to spend a bunch of time crafting a unique one right now. Um, you know, you could spend some time on that. All I'm going to do for the sake of expediency is just paste this in here, you know, and uh, show you what happens when you start using the editor. All right, so it's it's giving me this big red kind of deal here, saying that my basically that means that my focus, or I'm sorry, the, my meta description is too long. So I need to modify that. So I'm just going to, and the, you can't really put a bunch of spaces in here, by the way. You're, you're, Google's not going to space out your text when it shows it on the search engine results page. And that's what you're doing. You're specifying the text that you want Google to show on a search engine results page. So wouldn't worry about that. Um, just make like, you know, just uh, uh, kind of a free, just a flowing couple of sentences. So it looks like this. So uh, let's see here. It's too long. So let me get rid of this last sentence. And there we go. So it shows you. You can see this green bar. And this green bar will be kind of red or orange if it's not super happy. So you can see that it's orange right now saying you have some ways to go here. You want to get your text all the way to the end if possible. And uh, once you get there, the bar turns green and it shows you how much kind of space you have left for additional text if you need it. So green bar is good. So we're going to have that be our meta description for now. Um, and uh, again, you may want to spend some more time with that to really make it very good. Uh, but uh, at least you can kind of measure the length of it by looking at the green bar. Then we're going to look at our SEO title. Actually, let's go back to our problems, make sure that uh, it says the focus keyword meta description contains the focus keyword and the meta description has a nice length. So we got both of those points down. Now it says no internal links. Let's see here. Focus keyword. I want to actually look at the meta title. So let's look at the SEO. Okay, here it is. Center Imp improvements. The SEO title is too short. Uh, so we want to use, uh, we want to modify our SEO title. So we'll go up here to SEO title. By default, your website, uh, your SEO tool is going to go and grab the name of the post, causing treatments of gingivitis. So you can see right here, causing treatments of gingivitis, followed by the name of the website, which is CJ Dentistry. So that's the default. So that's what all these percentage signs means. It means it's just pulling that that information. Um, automatically so if you want to if you want to modify this and customize it just click in here and then you can now modify your seo title and so what i would do is i would put the oops excuse me i would put the focus keyword in the seo title at the front if possible oh man i keep doing the paste instead so here we are treatment or for gingivitis oh Oops, I, I have uh, fat fingers today. Sorry. Here we go. Treatments for gingivitis. And then what is the name of my title? Causes and treatments. So. Something like that. You don't have to go crazy, but that's just an example. So you want to keep your focus keyword treatments for gingivitis in here somewhere. You want to get that green bar. So that's going to be your title. And uh, let's scroll down. And it probably says that my, my title is looking good now. Let's see. Oh, so look at this improvement here. Since the SEO title contains the focus keyword, but it does not appear at the beginning. Try to move it to the beginning. So let's try that. Treatments for gingivitis causes of gingivitis. CJ Okay, so let's take a look now. So, so okay, here it is down here. SEO title contains the focus keyword at the beginning, which is considered to improve rankings. SEO title has a nice length. So now we've got our SEO title that's a, a winner. And we've got our description. That's a winner. And uh, that's it for the snippet preview. We're done here. Let's take a look at what else we need to do. No internal links appear in this page. Consider adding some. That's appropriate. So an internal link is a link to 
an other page on your website. So not to another website on the web, but your actual website. So if I had, for example, a blog post on how drugs can, you know, hurt your oral health, maybe what I'll do here with drugs is I'll link to that blog post that I already wrote, my blog post dot com right so actually for the purposes of uh of this demonstration i actually will have to uh link to an, an internal page so that it gives me the credit so we'll just go to like what is fluoride for example so i'll click on that and then i will click on add link so now i've added that link here which goes to um, my website so that's an internal link and it should be Okay, yeah, so look at this, normal internal links. So that's good, it likes that. So, and you could do more than that too. If you wanted to do, you know, four or five of those, that would be good too. But for this uh, demonstration, just gonna do the one. So the images on this page are missing alt attributes. This one confuses people a lot. So I'm gonna spend a little bit of time on this one. Um, and uh, hopefully you can kind of see what's going on here. This is a little bit complex, but it does require some time and, and, and attention. So. Now, uh, an alt attribute is something that you add to an image to inform the search engine what the image is. So when you have an image like I do on this blog post that's sitting in the blog post, um, Google's going to crawl your page and it's not going to understand the image. It's going to want a description for that image so it understands what that image is. So that's where, what we're going to do now. We're going to go and modify the image. So I'm going to click on the image and then once I click on it, I can click on this edit option. Now, once I'm in the edit area, I have a couple of things I can do. But basically what we wanna do is we want to enter in where it says alternative text, that's gonna be our alt attribute. And that's really what we wanna focus on right now. So within here, I want to include my focus keyword and alt alternative text needs to be a description of what you're seeing here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna first come up with a description, then I'm gonna find a place to put my focus keyword into it. So I'm gonna say, a uh, young woman sitting at her desk, wearing a smartwatch, holding her mouth, showing signs of tooth and gum pain as she researches treatments for gingivitis. So there it is. We've managed to kind of sneak our alt, our, our uh, excuse me, focus keyword into our alt text. So I'm going to update that now. And I'm gonna go down and just make sure that I've got that here. Yeah, the images on the page contain all attributes with the focus keyword. That's what we want. Woohoo! So that's all there is to that. So don't let that confuse you. It's not too it's not too painful or difficult. Just locate the images and then add a description into your into your um, alt text area. Make sure you include your focus keyword in that description. Uh, so once that's done, let's take a look at what else we have here. Improvements. The focus keyword does not appear in the URL. If you decide to rename the URL, be sure to check old throw and redirects for the new one. So this is uh, the, this last part where it's saying through and redirects. If you're creating a brand new post, you don't have to worry about that. If you're going back and retrofitting an old post, it's saying, hey, you know, this is an old post and it has, a, you know, a, a, an existing URL. So, you know, people who have that old URL try to find the post, they're going to you know, be taken to a 404 error page because you've changed the, the URL. They're not going to be able to find it. So you got to add a 301 redirect uh, in order for people to find the new one. I wouldn't worry about that right now. If you have questions about how to add 301 redirects, just let me know. Uh, so what we're going to do is look at the focus keyword does not appear at the URL. So you can update your URL here. So in the snippet preview, again, you can see something called slug. And so slug is going to be the URL and it wants you to add the uh, focus keyword into the URL. So instead of doing causes and treatments of gingivitis, I'm just going to, excuse me, I'm just going to use treatments for 
gingivitis. And no, let's just leave it at that. That's fine. Uh, okay, so treatments for gingivitis. That's my new slug. Uh, let me update the, I have to update the actual post itself in order to get that to register for the tool. Okay, so that's been updated. All right, and now our uh, URL is good to go. So you can see actually on the very top where it says permalink, that's the same thing. Treatments for gingivitis right here. You can edit it up here as well. So you can edit it in both places, either up here or down in the snippet preview when you click on it and edit the slug right here. Both of those will work for editing the URL. So now we have a good URL and it says the slug for this page contains a stop word. Consider removing it. So it doesn't like the idea that your uh, slug or your URL has the word for, which is a stop word. And uh, so f that's like, for example, stop words are like and for, but, to, these types of, you know, small words that oftentimes search engines won't even register because they don't really mean much to a search engine when they're considering um, content. So it says, you know, you can remove the stop word, but, it, but the problem is if we remove the word for, then all of a sudden we're going to get that error saying, again, uh, the URL does not contain the focus keyword. And so it's better for us to have a slug with a stop word than for us to have a URL that doesn't contain our entire focus keyword. So I'd rather have the word for in there. Um, that's just, you know, that's just making a, uh, a little bit of a compromise. Either way, it's not going to be a massive, you know, it's not going to be a massive change or it's not going to affect you in a big way. Um, so the last thing that we're going to look at are considerations. The focus keyword contains a stop word. So this may or may not be wise, depending on the circumstances. And then you can click on this link to learn more about stop words. So if you want to come up with a focus keyword that doesn't contain a stop word, you know, you can always change your focus keyword to something that does not contain a stop word. Um, that's up to you. But, you know, uh, for the, the purposes of this, you know, post and this demonstration, I'm, I'm pretty happy with the focus keyword and all the work that we've already done. So we're just going to leave it at that. So that's it. If you look at the analysis again, once more, um, we have mostly all good results. One consideration, one improvement. We're pretty okay with that. And you can see we've got the green light here. And another thing too is you don't have to get all good results. You can get mostly good results and have a couple of improvements left over, a couple of considerations left over, and you could still get the green light from the tool saying like this is, you know, this is going to be good enough. Obviously, if you're, um, you know, perfectionist, you're going to want to get as many of those green lights as you can. And so um, that's this is basically how you do it. So once I'm done with that, I'll just click update to make sure all of my changes have been published. And now I've got a really good, solid blog post that has been fully optimized for search. Okay, if you guys have any questions, let me know. Thanks so much for watching, guys.